Okay, it's uh, January 14th, 2012. Is that right, Greg? It seems to be. Okay. Tell me what we're doing here today. Well, we're indoors where it's a little warmer than outside. And Jim wants me to show you the progress on the V8 Wright Brothers engine that I'm working on. You can zoom in on the photograph on the wall. You can probably do that. Yes, I can. It's one of the few clues we have to go by since the original engine does not exist. Is this as it appeared in the Baby Grand in 1910? That's correct. I'll be darned. So essentially it's it's a variation on two vertical fours. Is that right? Two vertical fours married on a on a prototype crankcase. Okay, and right now we are fortunate in that we can see a vertical four block right here on the workbench, right? And that's another of my projects. Uh huh. Working up another reproduction vertical four. Okay, and I'm looking over that and I see a uh, what I call an oil pan or a sump back there. What's that? That is the that is the sump, the base for the for the V8 case. For the V8 that we just looked at on the machine over there. That's correct. Okay, I'm going to go back to that V8. You know, for some reason, it looked a lot bigger than it did the day we bought the casting back from Baltimore. If anything, it's smaller. I've been removing metal. Oh, no, but it looks awfully big from that angle. So what's the, what, what step are you in now with it? What I'm doing now is I am boring the saddles or the receptacles for the main bearings. All right. These are the bearing caps. Okay. Five of them. Okay. That and we're I'm looking at those two there in the middle, and those are. You're, you're making those, so to speak. Yes. And these are cast Babbitt bearing inserts as used on the four-cylinder, and I am making a set for the V8. And are they the same size? Actually, no. Uh, I found that this engine shares a lot with their later six-cylinder engine. Okay. What do we know about the six-cylinder engine? Uh, it seems to have been designed by the same brain that worked this engine out. Uh, the way it, that the case is split horizontally, and uh, which is uh, different than the four-cylinder case. Four-cylinder is not split. But this one is. This is two piece, and the six they did the same thing. So I'm using a lot of clues that I'm learning from the six to incorporate in this V8, since we don't really know what's going on inside. Are many sixes extant? Maybe I would guess four. And where are they? Uh, there's one in uh, the Harold Warp Museum. There are at least two in the Air and Space Museum in D.C. We have one over here on loan from from the Rhinebeck collection. That's four. Pretty rare engine. Yes. But not as rare as this V8. True. Yeah, they made one V8, two at the most, but most likely one, and it was very short-lived. Mm -hmm. This machine that I'm looking at to us novice, I've heard it called a Bridgeport. Bridgeport milling machine. Milling machine, and it did everything. It can do everything. Did it have anything to do with winning World War II? That's what you keep telling me. And tucked over here in the corner is another vertical four. Uh, which one is this? Uh, this is a copy of the engine that they used in Montgomery in 1910. Okay. In May of 1910. Just a quick look at uh, Wright Aeroplane Engine Number 20. 
which has quite a pedigree. And then we come back around and look at a Studebaker engine and, and then a uh, Matheson engine and a what I thought was a replica of a Wright airplane engine, but it's not. It's a no, real one. That one last flew in 1915. 1915 is the last time this engine flew. You've done a little work on it though, haven't you? Yeah, it's getting ready to run again. All right. And now we came around here to see this engine. Which is a right vertical six. Tell me about it, Greg, a little bit. They called this the right 660. Six cylinders, 60 horsepower. And you can see that it's got the horizontally split case like like the V8, so I'm using this for some some of the background for what I have to. Will you make this engine run someday, Gray? No, this is this is not ours. This is on loan, so it's here for me to study. Okay. There's some talk of copying it. I don't know if that will work out or not. That's a major undertaking from a financial viewpoint, isn't it? Right. I think that might be the uh, deciding factor. Yeah. I... Plus the fact that it wasn't the best engine that the Wrights produced. It's quite troublesome. But the important thing is it's one that the Wrights produced. True. Uh, these are the pistons? Uh, no, these are these are actually out of engine 43, which are unique. They've been drilled for weight reduction. I'll be darned. And in order to make that engine run, number 43, I have duplicated the pistons with fresh iron castings. And I took it upon myself to copy the whole patterns to duplicate what's inside 43. All right. Here's well, a piston out of it. You got a piston? This okay. is out of the six. All right, let me look at him. That's out of the four. So the four and the, that's the four on the left and the six on the right, that's on my the right. That's four, that's the six. Okay. When you have the opportunity to go through a right engine from finding one that you haven't seen before and bringing it up to speed to run it, how much percentage-wise, can you put a percentage value on how much new knowledge we gain? Well, we pretty well have the fours figured out. Uh, when I say the fours, I mean the vertical fours. Uh, I've worked on four original engines. And I've had my hands in probably five others. So we have we have pretty good background on that. We must have gained some What's knowledge that we didn't have. Well, we had none to start with. And now we know enough that we can reliably copy, authentically copy. And a good example of that would be engine number 20. Yeah. Which is, I would say, 90% original. It's got the original, it's got original rings in it, it's got original bearings in it. Uh, we changed out some hardware. I changed a couple valves because the valves that were in it were showing signs of failure. But I replaced the original valves with valves out of number 43. So right equipment went in, back in right equipment. And we have original engine number 33, which apparently was put together from parts by Orville for a, a window display. So it came to us just a collection of original parts and very incomplete. So that engine, what I did was I have reproduced everything except use the original crankcase and flywheel. So we have essentially an original engine with a lot of time on it. We have a new reproduction engine. I had them both on the dynamometer the same day. And the right specifications call for the engine to be a 35 horsepower engine. 
the original engine, number 20, dynode at 34.9 horsepower. The new, the newly rebuilt engine number three was 35.04 horsepower. So I say we got it nailed pretty close. I think so. Yeah. This is connecting right out of the vertical four for the six cylinder cylinder. This is a tubular multi-piece construction, saving weight. This is what they went to in the six. A forged beam rod. It's a heavier rod, isn't it? Actually, it's lighter. It's lighter, but it looks sturdier. This rod is lighter than this. I'll be darned. Any tests been made to find out which one was strongest? No. What would your guess be? I would think the forged rod is stronger. The multi-piece rods were known to fail. We don't know how or why or what method they failed, but they did fail occasionally. Yeah. Of course, we don't have much history on the beam rod because they didn't make many of these and apparently they all failed for one reason or another, so, so we're only guessing. Greg, is this another engine over here? That is some of the structure to the Langley Aerothrome five-cylinder radial engine. And that's from 1903. It was finished in 19, the original was finished in 03. This is uh, complete reproduction. Okay, and you're going to build that up and run it one of these days for me, aren't you? That's the plan. <laughs> and before I leave this room, what kind of airplane are we be building here? Uh, this is 1929 Parks biplane, built by the Parks Air College. Students. Yep. And uh, I guess that's some of the original pieces up there, huh? That's true. Yeah.